Yeah, welcome to Mother's Day to all of you online. And we're delighted today to have a whole group of us to help celebrate Mother's Day. We want this to be a time when we show appreciation and when we motivate you to be more appreciative of your mom and your family. To begin with, we're going to read a scripture from Proverbs 31. And my wife, who is the most lovely person uh, in the house and, and a partner I have had for almost 55 years, is going to read to us Proverbs 31, a well-known passage dealing with wife, women, and motherhood and family. Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. What a beautiful Hebrew poem. And we're going to reflect on it a bit later on after we've had our panel discussion. But I'm delighted to have with me five people representing two families. And, and they're going to share some things in response to some questions I'm going to be asking them. But first of all, we want to meet you. And uh, tell us your name. Tell us a wee bit about yourself uh, and something that will help us remember you, okay? And Joe, why don't we start with you? Sure. Thanks, Pastor Bud. Uh, as most of you know, my name is Josiah Duick. Um, my mother's name is Deborah Duick, and this is my lovely grandma, Ethel Duick. Um, something to remember me by. That's a hard question to start it off with. Um, I work out of Toronto, um, but due to the pandemic, I get to work from home, which has allowed me to come back to Calvary and participate in a wonderful panel such as this. So hopefully that's, uh, that's something that you can remember me by. Thanks, Josiah. My name is David Duick. I'm Josiah's father. Uh, four other children we have at home, my wife, Deborah. Um, people often call me Dr. Dave. I guess maybe that's some way you can remember me. I'm an optometrist here in town and uh, yeah, happy to be part of this panel. Hi, I'm Ethel. I am the mother and the grandmother of these guys here. And I have four children, two sons and two daughters. I have 13 grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. I love life. I love my grandkids, and 
I was I actually came from Owen Sound. I was the youngest of eight and I had the most wonderful mother anybody could ever have. Both my parents died when I was in my 20s, so I just cherish their memories and families. My name's Hannah Hewson. I'm the daughter of Christine Hewson, and something to remember me by, um, I have three nieces and one nephew who I love so much. I'm Christine, and this is one of my daughters. And I have a son and two other daughters. My son is Andrew, and he's married to Tiffany, and they've just had their third baby. Um, my oldest daughter is Alana. My youngest is Holly. You've seen Holly here. We have a beautiful property in Caster Center, and I have a lot of free-range chickens and ducks that roam around. My kids hate them. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of like my, uh, my funny farm, I think. Well, thank you very much, guys. It, it's good to have all of you, and it's, it's good to learn more of your story. And, and uh, I, I always just love hearing people talk about themselves, quite frankly, as long as they don't tell me the same story too often. <laughs> but... Uh, Hannah and Josiah, tell us three things that you appreciate a lot about your mom. So three things that I love or appreciate about my mom. One is her love for God and just how I can see it reflect in every area of her life. And then next is her wisdom. And then I also love how she is so patient and willing to answer any question anyone could ever have about anything. Wow, that's beautiful. Hanny, you took my first one. Uh, as my dad mentioned, um, I come from a pretty big family. I have four siblings and obviously my dad. So I think number one would be patience and I definitely attribute some of that to our basically forcing my mom to develop that trait. Uh, so number one being patient. Number two, um, my mom is one of the most hard working people I've ever met as a, a lot of the people here and in the congregation know she, she runs Conversations Cafe and Convo's Youth Zone that's attached to that. She runs our, our family in addition to running all the logistics behind my dad's farm and his optometry office. So her work ethic has always been something that I've really admired as someone who's always always working and definitely from Proverbs 31 never never idle in her hands and what she does um, the third thing that I'd say I most appreciate her is her love for people but further to that um, her her desire to see the people around her come to know and meet Jesus and so in particular whether it's at conversations cafe and meeting the needs for staff or becoming almost like a second mother or parent figure to them or whether it's the kids at the youth zone really just um, reinforcing the need to incorporate Christ in a relationship with him in conversations because in the end that's really what what the most meaningful thing we can do for staff and for these kids are um, and, and even further to that one specific example I was sharing with my family a little bit earlier this week how much I love The Chosen the TV show we've been kind of working through and shameless plug to join us at four o'clock Sundays for our watch party but her first thing that she mentioned is how many people in the, the cafe, her staff, that she can send that show to, to even get introduced to the character of Jesus. So those three things, being patient, hardworking, and loving people and meeting needs, but also further to that, wanting them to meet Jesus, are three things that I really admire about her. Boy, this sounds like a Proverbs 31 lady. And, and she is. I know her well enough to just appreciate her so deeply. Such a depth of character, Christian character. It's beautiful. Okay, just a few questions, especially for David and Christine. What are the most pleasant and helpful memories that you have of your mom? And your mom's right beside you, David, so let's start there. I guess I'll start, okay. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in a very loving, caring, um, secure home, godly home. Um, and mom has a big part to play in that. Back in the day when we were growing up, dad, he was around some of the time, but mom was there all the time. And uh, so she was an integral part in how we all turned out and um, just like that Proverbs 31 uh, lady I mean so many things I can think of about mom like she'd get up before everybody else make breakfast in the morning I'd hear her down there making a hot breakfast um, she'd always make meals especially on Sunday um, always inviting people over hospitality um, people in need people are going through a tough time they're lonely 
uh, or struggling, she would have them over. Christmas was a big one. I can remember going up to Owen Sound many a time, um, and I don't really remember my grandparents that well, but just tell, my mom tell me how, what a great lady her mother was, and I just wish I could have got to know her more. But she would run almost like a boarding house, people that were in need or whatever passing through, she'd have them in and feed them, but also share the gospel with them. So yeah, my mom's a great woman of faith, and uh, she shares it in her uh, words and her deeds, and especially by example. And I'm so fortunate that our kids have a chance to really get to know her, and she just puts so much into them, and they wouldn't be where they are today without her, nor would I or the rest of our kids. And uh, just uh, such a testimony for her, for God's goodness and, and grace. Um, I think of one verse she always used to tell me because I was kind of a miserable kid growing up sometimes and she'd say if you want to be happy all the day make others happy that is the way and it is so true Um, she invests in people she encourages people all the time always letters of encouragement uh, notes that she sends them or kind uh, phone calls she leads Bible studies with her um, fellow people around Heritage Village there and many have come to know Christ through her ministry there and I just love her so much and thank you mom mm, thank you yeah thank you okay Christine well, I think I forgot to say my mom's name at the beginning so my mom's name is Judy um, the most helpful memory I have of my mom is her servant heart Acts of service would definitely be her love language. I always remember her um, busy about our home. She would wake up when it was dark and make my dad his coffee and his hot breakfast and send him off to work with his lunch pail and his thermos. And she did it every morning. And sometimes she would go back to bed afterwards because she'd get up so early, but She worked about our home, she baked, she cooked, she cleaned, and she taught my sisters and I how to manage the home and how to work outside and tend a garden and cut the grass and put oil in the lawnmower and to fix little things if they broke so that when my dad got home, he didn't have as much to do, but he always had projects, so she was right there beside him, helping him and, um, my love language is acts of service. I don't know if it's a hereditary thing. I don't know if you pass that down, but she wasn't idle. Um, she was an inspiration just with how much she um, did for other people. She would help neighbors. She would bake something, and my sisters and I would have to go take it over, or we'd have to go cut the neighbor's grass. And then growing up, I really appreciated her helping me. Anytime I moved, she would help me pack, she would help me unpack, she'd help me clean, she'd help me paint, um, she'd help me garden. When my kids were born, she would come and stay for a few days and help, and I just uh, uh, really appreciate her. A um, lot of the Proverbs 31 woman in her that I see, and um, I appreciate that most about my mom. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, Josiah, what things has your mom taught you that has proven to be real helpful? How much time you got? Uh, No, I'll just uh, focus on one primary thing that's really stuck with me throughout the years, in particular the last few years. Um, Something that she always has a focus on is just uh, the statement that regardless of what the situation is, what's, whatever is going on, what, what really matters and what really lasts is, is what we do for God and for his kingdom. And so for her, as an example, like through difficult times, whether it's with the business or work or whatever it is, even if through all of the struggle and the time and effort, even if one person as a result of that grows closer to Christ or meets Jesus through that, then every other thing is worth it. And so it's just been a great reminder for me in particular of a time of you start to get into this adult stage and you start to have to make decisions and you start to think is this God's plan for you or is it this other direction you start to question some of those things and just this reminder that our 
what God wants from us is wherever we are now, whatever that situation, whether it's good or bad, whether we feel like we're in the right place or whether it's kind of a gap time in between, what really is lasting and real is that God wants us in that situation to, to do our best for him. And just that reminder of the verse so that he who began a good work in you in Christ will complete it. And so just that reminder from, from her that when things get tough, when things don't go exactly as our human plans go, that as long as we keep that reliance and focus on being like Christ as much as we can in this situation and as a byproduct of that, helping others grow to hopefully meet Jesus, that's the most important thing. So that's uh, the one thing that's most stood out for me from, from watching her, especially over the ne- last number of years. Wonderful. Thanks, Josiah. And Dave, what do you appreciate most about your mom? And you've shared a few things already, but what do you appreciate most about Deborah as the mom of your five children? Yes, yeah, so, and that's, that's not a hard question because they're, they're very similar. And people say when you're going to get married, you try to find a woman that's similar to your mother. And in qualities, like you don't look the same, but in qualities, um, I think they're very similar. Um, I know Deb's motto, and, and mom's would be too, is love God, love people. And it's so evident in their lives, both of them. Um, they both stayed home raising the children, um, fostering a good spiritual awareness. And um, when we were at the age we could decide, then we all decided to follow, follow Christ. And um, we hope the same for our kids. Um, Mom is always there to uh, encourage, as I said before. I thank her so much for that. And our kids, how she's uh, ministered and built into their lives in so many ways. She always has special days with them all the time. Uh, Micah, it just his highlight of the week to go to Grandma's for the day on, on Tuesday. For Deborah, um, we have five children. Five children in five years, that says it all right there. I am so thankful for that, that she was so instrumental in, in bringing them up when I was working. I, I sometimes take, took over in the evening, but um, we homeschooled for a number of years, or she did, I should say. Um, I helped a little bit when, the, when some of the subjects got a little bit more difficult, but um, in the maths and sciences anyway, everything else she was fine. But she taught them not only academically, but musically um, and spiritually, most importantly. Um, they, they all learned lar- large tracts of scripture um, many Bible uh, stories that uh, they studied, uh, and it gave them a good grounding. Um, yeah, and, and they're all professed faith in, in Christ so far, and we just continue to pray for them. And uh, two are married. We just uh, continue to commit them to you, but no grandchildren yet. Um, with my mom, or, and Deborah too, the fruit of the Spirit is so much exemplified. Um, and every one of them. I, I started going through them uh, when I started preparing for this, and I think, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They're all so evident in their lives, and I can just give countless examples of that. And my mom's been there through all the different stages of her life. Um, we're not quite there yet, but she's always been there to support us as a family. Um, Deb's always been there for our kids to support them, and um, yeah, I am so blessed to have a wonderful wife and a wonderful mother. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Dave. Now, to all of you, I asked if you could think of a mom or mother in the Bible uh, that, uh, that particularly um, appeals to you, but also that you really have come to appreciate as you maybe read the story or as you read about a mom as we did in Proverbs 31. In fact, Proverbs 31 may be one of the, the sort of passages that you want to refer to. So Christine, why don't we start with you this time, okay? <laughs> um, the mom that I relate to or inspires me the most is the unnamed mother in Proverbs 31. Um, Her wisdom, um, everything that she embodies, getting her strength from the Lord, everything that she is, is because of her reverence for God. I read a commentary that suggests maybe that Proverbs 31 woman wasn't 
just one woman, but it's many women. And we all possess different qualities and, and gifts, but to aspire to be like that is, is what I go to all the time and reread it and reread it. Um, I wrote a little list of some of her qualities. I know we read it at the beginning, but it says she is noble and valuable. She's praiseworthy. She's dependable. She's good, kind, discerning, hardworking, capable. She's a planner. She's organized, diligent. She's fair and generous. She's wise in handling money. She's strong. She's charitable and compassionate. She's resourceful, respect, respectable. She has a sense of humor, and she's industrious. When I'm feeling a little bit down or discouraged, I, I read that and can usually pick myself up and find inspiration to get back on track. And um, yeah, she's, she would be... She's a noble woman. She would be she? the noble woman that I admire and look up to. I, the bar is set high. So a mom or a woman from the Bible that I really like, just really wanted to maybe even like resemble was Hannah. She had this steadfast faith and she just constantly never gave up praying to God for a son. And maybe I respect her or just want to be more like her even because my own mom just her steadfast faith and just her constant praying for the same prayer and she just yeah my mom also resembles Hannah but I think we all could mimic that faith that Hannah had just she was like beaten down she didn't see any fruit of her prayer she thought but she continued on praying and she then got a son and that's someone I really aspire to be like isn't it nice you got named after her that's beautiful okay Ethel what about you well I chose Naomi we hear a lot about Ruth always but I totally admire Naomi she had to because of the famine she and her husband and their two sons, they had to leave. They went to a foreign country, and she had to leave all her family, all her support behind. And, of course, while they were there, it ended up that they were there for about 10 years, but her husband died, and then her two sons died. And I cannot imagine what Naomi went through in her, uh, with no support and her emotions and everything else. And then she had her, her two daughter-in-laws. She talked with them, and she knew she had to go. She wanted to go back home to Judah, and um, she told these girls to go back to their own homes and back to their relatives. And they loved each other. It tells you in the Bible they hugged each other. They cried, and uh, the both daughter-in-laws said, "No, we can't leave you." But then the one did go back home. But Ruth came with her. She must have been such an example as a mother-in-law to have such adoration from her daughter-in-laws that they wanted to be with her. And then we all know that part in the Bible that is so neat where Ruth just begged. She, was, she, wanted, to go, she wanted to go with Naomi. And, and you know that part that says, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. And then we know later on that Ruth became the grandmother of David. But I just think that love connection or that example that Naomi had during her dark, dark life, she must have been an amazing person. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And um, I think this is just... Uh, fabulous story we're all familiar with at Christmas time but um, she must have been just such a humble woman um, for God to approach her and that she would be the carrier of God's only son and 
and the message of salvation and the whole genealogy about the tribe of Judah that she fulfilled that part. Um, uh, and, you know, when she went away because she was pregnant, she was carrying the baby, and then um, it's not proper in that culture. There's going to be a divorce and so on. So she went to be with Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And as soon as Elizabeth saw her, the baby leaped in her womb. And, um, and John the Baptist with his ministry and Jesus with his ministry right in tandem with each other. Um, and just how Mary saw Jesus through all the stages of his ministry and, uh, um, and supported him. And um, yeah, and just it must have just been overwhelming for her to contemplate that uh, thing in her mind. But um, yeah, but anyway, that just impressed me about a, a, one of the exemplary mothers in uh, Bible times. It's a perfect segue because mine was actually Elizabeth. So um, I know we most of us know the story of, of Elizabeth, but I think Luke 1 just does an amazing description of, of who Elizabeth is and, and a little bit about her story. So as my dad mentioned that she was the mother of John the Baptist, but what was so cool about her is that for her entire life, there's only a couple a couple verses that we know about her, but all that it says is, is she was barren and she was a fervent and obedient to Christ. And what I think was really important about that is that in in that culture, when you're you're a mother, when you're getting out more more elderly and, and grown in age, and you don't have a child, a lot of people automatically assume that you've been disobedient to God, and it's it's seen as as almost a shameful act because you haven't been able to to have a child. And so, a couple of things that I, I really take away and respect from Elizabeth is first of all. God's timing. Like, I'm sure for her it wasn't ideal that you wait till you're elderly and older before you even have your first child, but the fact that there was that level of trust and the fact that that God's timing for her was later than it was for, for the normal person, I think just her respect of that was was incredibly commendable. And I think second of all, to, to what I mentioned before, the fact that even though I, I assume her prayer was, God, give me a son, but being able to fervently remain obedient to God even despite that prayer not being answered was was incredible and i think just for me in particular that reminder that even when we're we're in obedience to to christ sometimes what our ideal answer to prayer is whether it's a job or whether it's career or family or children that that may not be god's plan and i i love what pastor andrew was saying a couple weeks ago when we talk about our prayers and being rooted in faith and not necessarily the outcome that that we want to happen but being willing to kind of take that step back and see that God's plan is obviously just immeasurably bigger and better than ours and so just Elizabeth's example to say God it's in your timing and for her it was awesome that that happened and John the Baptist and his ministry and the important role that he played but the fact that she was willing to continue to be obedient in that time of waiting and not knowing whether or not this prayer would ever be answered is uh is amazing and that's just someone that i really look up to as a mother in the bible great yeah yes there are a few others but thank you for highlighting those um i want to come back to proverbs 31. Uh, proverbs 31 is really a poem and it's uh, a poem based on the hebrew alphabet and in sequence uh, there are the 22 letters in the Hebrew al alphabet that, that, uh, that the poem itself is built around the first letters of each of the alphabet uh, and uh, uh, speaks of a woman of great, great character. It zeroes in, of course, on the beauty and the, and the worth of, of women, uh, of a wife and a mother, and, and all of this couched in she being of godly character. It's an interesting word or a very hard word to translate that is translated uh, as being a noble, a noble character. Some translations say she was a virtuous woman. Uh, another one, she was a woman of valor. And, and I've heard some pastors preach on this uh, and they call her the Bible Wonder Woman. And she sure is that. Just an amazing, amazing person described. And, and I, I won't recite all of the 22 attributes of this particularly godly woman of godly character, but let me summarize it with, with these thoughts if I could. As a wife, she honored her husband 
and family. And secondly, as a mother, she cared for her children. And thirdly, as a breadwinner, she was an extremely hard worker. And as a woman, she focused on her inner beauty. Now, just to repeat some of that and to expand just a few thoughts around each of those four points, as a wife, I can, I can just picture this, that her husband is at the city gate or he's at the city square, and, and he's surrounded by other elders along with him, and they're talking about various things. And, and suddenly, one of the men in the square, in this circle of elders, uh, says something rather derogatory about his wife. And a few of the heads go down, looking at the ground and kind of hanging down in, in, in embarrassment. Uh, and then another guy ch chimes in and, and, and also says something quite negative. You know, guys, when they get together and those sort of things, they talk big talk. And, and some of the talk is not always nice talk. And, and, and suddenly a certain man in the circle, one of the elders speaks up and says, men, you got to know that I have an amazing wife. She's an amazing mother. And, and I can't imagine my life without her. Our family wouldn't be our family if, if it wasn't for her. She is a, a woman who honors her husband as, as a woman that loves her children. And, and, and I want to love her in return. And guys, I think we as men need to show our appreciation through loving our wives. And by now, virtually all the guys, especially the ones that have been critical, are looking down at the ground and kind of staring at it and they don't want to be seen almost. And, and, and then the conversation goes on and, and he begins to talk about her as a mother and, and how she is so devoted to her children. She's a, a teacher of the children there's a dedication, there's, there's a love that, that she just demonstrates by caring. And if we had time, I could tell you a story that touched me deeply some years ago when I was called to the hospital uh, to try to comfort a mom, a single mom who had lost her twin child at, at 14 months through uh, uh, a chest of drawers falling on the child because they were playing in the drawers of the dresser. Moms love children, their children especially. And, and we, we must, uh, and even though I'm too, I'm too old to have a living mother, but those of us who have living mothers and grandmothers, uh, we need to practice saying, I love you. Thank you for, for being you. It's so important. Now, this mom described in Proverbs was also a working woman. She got up early before dawn and she was still working when the rest had gone to bed. And, and, and she contributed to the family. She was in, you know, a very important worker in the household. But in addition to that, she worked outside of the home as well. And, and some of the, the goods and things that she was able to accumulate from outside and her work and so on, she, she handed or passed on to the poor. Just an amazing picture of, of a woman who was a breadwinner, but more than a breadwinner. It was just a picture of compassion. And then she was a woman whose focus was on God. She realized the most and greatest beauty that a person could possess was an inner beauty. I, I picture she was a beautiful lady physically as well, but, but her real beauty was a deeper beauty, a beauty that came from inside. It came from a fear of God. And I looked at my Bible just as I was turning to Proverbs, and, and this is one of my older Bibles, and it's a large print Bible because of my age. When uh, we ask, what version are you reading? I always say I'm reading the large print version. And, and, and I wrote this. I said that fear, and the acrostic for fear, F-E-A-R, is false evidence appearing real. Fear is false evidence appearing real. 
And what I fear the most will become my God. And so I want my fear, and a godly mother wants her fear, her reverence, her respect to be for God. For as the Proverbs also say, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's the right fear to have. Now, we want to know that we love you. We love you as a panel, and I'm especially thankful for your participation today. And, and we, as men especially, we owe so much to our mothers. We all do. And, and I trust that you've had a good experience and I unfortunately realize that there are some who don't have a good experience in terms of their motherhood. But for those, our heart goes out and we pray for them. So I want to thank you for joining us today and I'm going to just close this session with a word of prayer. God, I thank you so much that in your creation, you gave a special dignity to the crown of your creation, which is humanity. And, and God, after you had made all things in the course of five days, you, you then made humankind. You made man and woman, and you breathed within them a living breath, a living soul. And, and so we're not just physical beings, we are also spiritual beings. And as such, we want to respect each other. We want to show appreciation to one another. But especially on this Mother's Day, we want to show appreciation for mothers. But not just today, but hopefully every day of the year. So thank you for the panel. Thank you for the Word of God and what it's taught us today again related to moms. God, thank you that you are our Father, and thank you that Jesus has called us as the church his bride. And as men, he enjoins us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And to wives, he has said, submit to that love that is by nature the same love, or should be, that Christ's love is for us individually. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.